what's up guys? So right now we currently have our turmeric series going on. We've done two turmeric recipes. We're going to do two more. And if you haven't already, check out last week's video right up here. Uh, the benefits of turmeric. Disease prevention that is better than medicine. The many benefits of turmeric right up here. Really, really good video. I want to also mention a week from today, we're going to announce our two we're going to do two 30-day challenges in the month of June. And then during that month, we're going to upload every single day. We're going to talk about several topics. And we're, we're going to, you know, we have yet to do a vlog on this channel. Just where we, a day in the life and all that kind of stuff. We have yet to do, we're always kind of more serious. I want to do some more fun videos. It's a bunny. Month. Hey, it's walking towards our house. Hi, bunny. Anyways, so stay tuned for that. 230 day challenges coming up. There's going to be prizes. Also, one more thing before we get into the video. This big old jackfruit, 18 pounds, cost $28. I don't want to cut into it unless we know it's ripe. I don't think it is. When do we know it's ripe? Does anybody know? I read it's supposed to be like yellow. It's yellow? green. It's green? Okay. Well, if anybody can confirm these is true or false, preferably somebody with experience. So some of our subscribers have had questions for Sarah. So women's exercise, how she started, what she does. So yeah, when I first met you, you really didn't exercise. No. Like, at all really. No. So how, how did that come about? What changed you? What got you into it? You exercise six days a week now. Yep. You run, what, about five to seven miles? Yeah. Okay. About a 7.3, 7.4 on the treadmill. So about an eight minute mile. You do this six days a week, yep. pretty much six, yeah, without fail. Like mm -hmm. you'll go, you'll go three months straight of doing it six days a week with just Sundays off. You do this without fail. So tell us about that. How did you get into it? Start off with that. Well, how I got into it, part of it was Jake got me into it. This guy, this guy over here, because when we. Even, we'll start before we got married. Yeah, before we got married. Mm -hmm. I was always into fitness a little bit and kind of did some jogging and stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll go jogging and we'll we'll start to do that. And so- We went outside. We, we went outside. We went a little bit. Right before, when we were engaged, right before we got married, yeah. I think? Yeah. We would go, he was, that was when we were at our apartment, I remember, and um, I would go there and hang out after work a lot of times and um so I started jogging with him a little bit and we would he went to he was into lifting weights and so we had our apartment we had this free gym that we could go to so we went there and it was kind of a ghetto gym it was really small and then they had about four treadmills I want to say Couple more than that, maybe, not many. Maybe, maybe there was usually only four, four that were actually working. Yes, and they were really crappy ones. They were, they were not very good at all. We would run on the treadmill a little bit. More so in the winter time. Yeah, we would go outside in the summer, but I ran about half a mile, and I pretty much thought I was gonna die. I don't think I could go any more than that. It was, it was a struggle. The, then you just kept doing it and we would go outside and we're pretty committed to it. I think we did it about every night, I want to say. Was it? I can't remember. This is a while I don't. Ago. I can't remember. I think we did, I think we did it about at least every a couple, night. At least two or three times a week. Yeah. So we would do that and then he got married and we would go to that little gym and after a while you just started kind of picking it up. And yeah, you eventually, now you wouldn't go to the gym without me when we were first married and engaged. No. I think I started to go after we got like married, though. like a year in, maybe? Yeah, I would go to the little crappy gym after work and use the treadmill there and stuff. And I would go there by myself. It kind of got more fun to do it, so. Because you got better, so it yeah. got easier. Yeah. So it, it didn't suck because you could actually do more than a mile now. Yeah. So, you know, you would... Eventually, when you start to get better at it, it just gets more fun, mm -hmm. and you then you want to go more because you're better at it. So the more, the better you get, the more you want to do it because it becomes easier for you. Watch the Biggest Loser, and that 
they would always run those marathons at the end. So I thought, well, these people are like obese and they're running a marathon. I'm like, why, why can't we do it? Why can't I get better at this? You know, so we I'm did. In shape. So I just said, okay, well, I better. You just gotta push yourself a little bit. And that was in 2012, October. Couldn't even do a mile on the treadmill. It was like a slow pace too. It was like a five or something. Oh yeah, it was really and slow. I thought I was gonna die. To marathon runner. And now you've really come to like this. I mean, you've been doing this for years now. That's a long At time. At least five years. I would say maybe 40 to 50 days a year she doesn't run. I mean, even if we're on vacation, it's usually the vacation time is summertime, so it's nice out, so we're running outside. Mm -hmm. um, even if we go to my parents, we use the indoor track if it's winter. If it's summer, we're outside running. So you really just... I would say, yeah, about 40, 50 days a year. And you don't take Sundays off as much in the summer because you just want to be outside and absorb some sunshine. Yeah. So what is this motivation to go six days a week, every single week? I mean, without fail, always doing five to seven-ish miles? Yeah. What's your well, motivation for that? I'd say motivation is, it just, it makes you feel better. And it, um... I think exercise sends endorphins to your brain too. It just makes you happier, it makes you feel better, that your sleep is better. I mean, I always sleep good, but say if you struggle with sleep too, that exercise does help you with that. And it makes you feel better. So the biggest thing is you're enjoying it. I that's, enjoy that, it. That's the, cause you, I look forward to it. Like, would you lift weights six days a week or would no. you want to swim six days a week? No. So you enjoy it. I think that's the key to get exercises. Find exercises you enjoy. If you really like swimming, go for swimming six days a week. I think that's if the key. If you like the spin bike, do spin, <laughs> spin classes. Whatever you want to do. Whatever's going to get you in there. You don't ever seem to get sick of it. Like right now it's 8.30. We've been up since 5.30. We, you haven't even really relaxed yet today. I haven't even like sat down. This is the first. This is the first really, time really sitting down. Except so for my you know, it's half been hour break. Fifteen hours. Um, I don't know. Do you ever just want to take a break from it, or you just enjoy it, huh? I just enjoy it. You think it could be too much? I mean, some people have said that about you in the past. Sarah over exercises. You think that's you? you I just. <sighs> this do you is think of that? this is such a myth. Over exercise. I mean, you got people that are ultra athletes and they're doing these training for these 100 mile runs i mean running what a couple miles a day it's really not going to do a whole lot i mean honestly if you think about it there's people out there that are training way harder and doing a lot more mm -hmm. i really think that's all perspective of what your thoughts are on exercise if you don't exercise at all they're gonna say oh my goodness well that's way too much and then there's people out there that are just it's not even anything to them they're gonna they do it every day anyways it's all what you're really used to well, the guidelines for 2008 recommends a half hour of exercise five days a week so you definitely exceed that it's only like 85 percent or 90 percent of americans that are actually doing it so that's great I don't exercise six days a week, if you're wondering. I do not like running inside on the treadmill. I don't. I, I really just, I don't like it. I do it in, when it's colder out, when there's snow on the ground, because I want to stay in decent shape. But in the summer, yes, I'm outside a lot more running. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say six days, though. I work about 46 hours a week, and you know, we're trying to do YouTube, got to spend time with Sarah, you know, it's like... Yeah, life's busy. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely running a lot more. Winter's kind of my off season. So yeah, I don't exercise six days a week. Any other exercises that you like a lot? or it's, I think it's mostly just running for you. Running. If I love somewhere I could do hiking more. I do like that a lot. Like in Colorado and stuff. Hiking and being out in the wilderness. But that's a little... You can't really do that, so... So next question by another one of our subscribers, one of our favorite, well, she is our favorite. So she noticed you weren't doing fully raw. You said you were going to do fully raw for an entire year. You started October 1st. It was going to be a whole entire year. I think it was November 1st. A whole year of being fully raw. 
and then you ate the split pea soup and you've been eating other cooked food that lasted three or four months what happened with that you said you were going to do it for a year and it didn't go through did you feel different did you not feel good what happened with that jake was going to do that challenge of uh cooked food ah yes what i eat in a week that video so, will be linked right up here what i eat in a week on 36 dollars so he was eating all these potatoes all the time and because it's cheap that's how i ate 36 dollars in a whole week and they were really good and i thought well they can't be bad they're a whole food there was you know there it's a it's a it's a vegetable mm -hmm. so i figured well okay maybe i could just eat some of those and um see what makes a difference and i don't think that it really makes that much of a difference i think that when you're eating 100 percent raw it, you're always like have energy like it, does, it, it doesn't like deplete your energy not that cooked food does but felt you felt good on the raw diet for a few months yeah any changes when you went off but see you're still mostly raw right now you're like I, yeah 95. potatoes is like the only thing you eat cooked so the main difference is you know you eat cooked food and we normally eat it at night which raw till four i guess but i think that that's almost like something that I think that is a good thing because you know, eating cooked food in the middle of the day pleads your energy yeah it makes you a little bit more tired or like you're not gonna want to go work out after you ate a bunch of potatoes and because it sits in your stomach like a rock yeah I think that's the main difference I do think that cooked food is not bad I'm not like discriminating against it I think that you should be able to eat it but there's people out there that say raw is the best. What do you think? Is it superior? I do think that it is the best diet because, and here's why I think that, because raw foods, they're, it's 100% raw foods. There's no processed foods. Nothing processed, There's nothing bad. all plant foods, which when we eat cooked food, it's just all plant foods anyways. But, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people get on like the cooked food and it's, Pasta and bread and all this processed stuff. Food additives, food colorings, and you can vegetable oils. get kind of into that whole category. So you can get into junk food really fast. In other, in other yeah. words, if you're not raw. So I I would say if you're going to eat cooked food, stick with a hundred percent plant food, which mm -hmm. that's what we do. Yeah, and I feel fine on that. So really no changes then that you felt from going raw back to cooked, huh? Because I mean, you're yeah. already like 90, 95% raw. I mean, today you were fully yeah. raw. I was fully raw today too. I do think that you should be at least 80 to 90% raw. That's, that's my opinion. I think that most of your food, because I do think that it depletes nutrients when you cook mm -hmm. it. Like vitamin C for it. It will get depleted. It won't get depleted a hundred percent. And then two, if you cook food, don't like cook it where it's dead. Yeah. I know a lot of people they serve you vegetables and it's it doused it, in oil. It's doused in oil, doused in butter, and, and it it looks like it died. There's nothing there. So you're just eating a bunch of fat with a vegetable that died, and there's nothing left to it. It's pointless. So if you're gonna cook your vegetables I would just say steam them for a couple minutes just till they're softened well oh, potatoes you gave into the potato cravings I do like that potatoes a lot potatoes that's really the only cooked food you eat I mean that's once in a while steamed broccoli we had the pea soup you don't really eat the beans and lentils I cook so yeah no changes and you gave it up because of the potatoes that was the kryptonite mm-hmm they're really good. I like those sweet potatoes the best. Are you going to do another attempt? I think in the summer, maybe. when it's, A whole year? Maybe not a whole year. I think that it's a long time. But, I mean, a couple months, it really isn't that hard. Yeah, especially in the summer. In the summer when we get our CSA and stuff <laughs> and all that. It's Check out this video right up here. Advantages and disadvantages of the fully raw diet. I kind of, I don't really tell my view, I guess, on it. I just, there's some advantages and I think there's some disadvantages of raw. And 
you know, we'll have a lot more time. To, we'll be uploading 30 videos in June. Perhaps we'll do a whole video on that. What do I think of Raw? Yeah, that could be a whole video. That's kind of hard to come up with 30 videos in 30 days. That'll be one in June. If you have any more questions. Yeah, we'd love to do Q&As. You know, thank you guys for asking these questions. I find that an honor that people I've never even met are asking us questions about our lives and how we do things, what we do. To me, that's just really cool to be getting asked those questions by people we've never even met before that we've just chatted with and messaged over the internet. So thank you guys for showing an interest in us. It makes us think that we're doing something right if um, people are showing an interest in our lives and how we do things. So, so and then really in summary, the exercise, find the thing that you like and enjoy to do mm -hmm. and stick with it. And maybe find a buddy that you can do it with so you're not all alone. And the fully raw thing, I say at about 95%, I'm still a raw diet with a little bit of cooked food maybe in the evening. So I think I still feel good on it, but I think that you're supposed to eat majority of your food is supposed to be raw. I'll, I agree with her on that. Again, I'll explain that in June why we believe majority of your diet should be raw. And, you know, people are, people are want to get into exercise. Well, let's use running, for example, because that's your area of passion. Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants to get into running. A lot of people do that. I've, I've seen it on Christi, Fully Raw Christina's channel oh, yeah. when, she, when she talks about how she runs. And people ask, beginner tips for runners. So what do you, well, what's, your, what's your beginner tip? Beginner tips, if you want to start getting into running, first of all, you need to stop with your excuses. People... Have, all the time make up excuses for why they can't I'll start exercise. Monday start today I'll start it I'd say for the first tip is start now if you can start and one of the things that I think that helps is one tip is to be prepared to have your stuff ready instead of oh well I have to go do this and this and this first have a set time that you're gonna work out or exercise and stick yeah. to it because you go to you go to the gym the same exact time every day after yeah, work. Yeah, just stick to it. That's a huge tip. Instead of making excuses, so set a time. Set a time. Be prepared. Have your your stuff with you. And then I think the second tip would be to just, go beyond what you think that you can a little bit. Don't just say, "Well, I." ran this far and that's all I'm going to be able to do. Your cardio, your heart and lungs have got to be pushed a little bit. Yep. It's a, it's a muscle. Yep. Sure so is. it's just like working out, lifting weights. Okay. If you're lifting weights and you're, Oh, well I'm lifting this little weight and not really doing much, but I'm going to go tomorrow. I'm going to lift the same amount of weight and the same repetitions. You're not going to do anything. You got to work your heart and lungs a little bit. So, yep. Gotta push yourself. Oh, say you're out of breath. Well, yeah, you're gonna be out of breath for a little bit, but it's a good thing. And of course, you forgot. Start off slow. If you yeah. Can only, if you can only run for a minute, then run for a minute. But at least do something. Do something. Yes, I think that's it. Stay hydrated. Stay healthy. Eat lots of whole foods. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Encourage one another. And build each other up. Get this edited and uploaded for tomorrow. Bye guys. All right, bye.